Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And uh, we're doing another screencast in our series on iTunes Match. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we've already talked about. But today what I want to talk about is how to troubleshoot some of your non-matches. Now, the problem we've got is we're kind of hunting in the dark on this because we really don't know what Apple uses to match our songs. Uh, but a lot of us have had songs that match in different ways uh, where we have, you know, half of our album that matches and the other half that doesn't. Uh, I can give you an example of that uh, here uh, with my uh, In Excess uh, album. You can see that this is all one album here and it matches just about all the songs but if I do it by cloud status uh, you can see that I've got some that were uploaded uh, and so I'm not really sure why those were uploaded uh, what the issues were with them uh, but here's a couple of things that I've uh, I've been able to figure out is that uh, uh, Apple uses a bunch of different things to match our songs uh, they use the waveform uh, which is a difficult one to to match or to, to fix so that one you're pretty stuck on if it doesn't match the waveform uh, they also use metadata uh, so your metadata, if it doesn't match quite what's in the iTunes store, rather than take the risk of, of mismatching a song, it won't match it up. Uh, it also uses file size, <clears throat> so how big your file is. Again, another one that would be difficult to determine or trim because we really don't know what the file sizes are uh, in iTunes, as I'll show you in a minute, uh, to be able to do that. And then also the song length, so how long the song is. And so it, it, it has those things uh, in that equation somewhere, uh, based on just some, some research I've done on the Internet. So I'm not really sure uh, what that means or to what extent those things come into play. But I can show you a few things that you can try to see if you can get some of these songs to match. Now, I've had uh, you know very uh, little uh, success with some of these. Uh, I've had kind of one, two songs that might match. Uh, in this example, I, I have no idea if these will match or not, but I'm going to show you just a few things that you can do uh, to, to troubleshoot this. Uh, but just know up front that uh, there really isn't an exact science to this, so we're just kind of trying a few things out. So the first thing that we're going to uh, look at is the metadata of the song. And so you can see the metadata. I'm going to take this one that was uploaded here, uh, New Sensation. I'm just going to highlight it. And if you uh, command I on the song, it'll obviously bring up the information on the song. And so as I look here uh, at the song, I can see uh, you know some of the the information on it I can change the info in the info tab you can see it says new sensation it says LP version and I just want you to note uh, right here that it says LP version and three minutes and 40 seconds on the song so what we're gonna do is uh, now that you've noted that we're gonna close this okay and we're gonna go into uh, iTunes itself into the iTunes store and we're going to see, here's the album in the iTunes store, and we're going to look for New Sensation. And notice that the metadata doesn't say LP uh, version, so that might be an issue that we can fix. You'll also notice that the song on the iTunes store is 3 minutes and 39 seconds, not 3 minutes and 40 seconds. So I can see right away I might have two things that might be causing me problems. Uh, you can also look down here on the genre and the release date and things like that uh, if you wanted to you know, dig in, uh, a, in a little more detail. But I just want to show you kind of a high level so that you can then go out and explore your own songs and and really just see if any of this stuff works uh, if it does work for you or you discover a technique it'd be great just put it down in the notes uh, uh, here in YouTube just so that uh, other people can pick that up and maybe get some ideas from you as well so I'm gonna go back now uh, to that particular song and so I've got to filter my uh, I'm gonna filter my library again here and I'm gonna go right into this song here so I'm gonna command I and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this extra stuff here in the metadata. So I'm going to go to the info, and I'm just going to fix this particular song just by doing that. And like I said, I can fix all kinds of other things. I noticed that it was rock before was the genre, so I'm right there. So I'm just going to fix this and uh, say, okay, and so now you'll notice... When I do that, okay, it's disappeared with that. Now, I don't think that's the thing that's causing a problem because if you look up at other songs that I've matched, it still, still said LP version on there. But I want to clean up my songs, so that'll help uh, just do that. Now, the other thing that was off that we saw was the fact that the song uh, length was just a, just a second longer than what was on the iTunes uh, store. So uh, I've been able to do a little bit of research and I found a tool that will do this for you where you can trim uh, the length of, uh, of the song uh, in, your, in your MP3. So to do that, one of the things that we're going to have to do first is I want to take a copy of this song all right, and I'm just going to put it uh, on my desktop. It's actually going to go uh, into my folder here uh, in a minute. So I'm going to pull up the finder 
And uh, I'm going to put that over here so that we can see. There's my song right here at the top. Um, and what I'm going to do now is there's a software program um, that I found online that, uh, that will trim this kind of stuff. And it's called MP3 uh, Trimmer. And so let me just pull that up for you. It's called MP3 Trimmer. So if you do a, a search for it, you'll see it, or I'll try to put a link to it uh, in the show in, in the notes on this uh, screencast. And what this program does is what it says. It actually allows you to trim an MP3 and keep everything intact. So what I'm going to do is take the song here from my finder, and I'm just going to drag it down uh, into this uh, program, and it's going to uh, go through and add the song. You can see it doing that right there. And uh, there's my song, right? You see that it says three. 3 minutes and 40 seconds at the end and I can, you know, listen to the song if I wanted to, I could play it back. But what I really want to do is take some time off the end of this song. So what I can do on here is if you notice if I click the minus here, I'm starting to trim the song. And what I want to do is get it as close as I can to 39 uh, on the dot. Sometimes that just won't work with the waveforms, but I'm just going to keep clicking this down until I get as close as I can to where it's uh, 39 all by itself. Oh, there I went below, so I'm going to come one up. So it's a fraction of a, of a millisecond above that. But I'm going to leave it like that because I want to uh, use this to see if it'll work. Now, once you've got it to where you want it like that, and I've trimmed the song, and this is a kind of a neat little program. You can add silence to the end. So if you need to add more uh, length to the song, you can add some silence at the end. You can trim the front if you want, uh, if there's too much silence. Uh, I always check this keep the ID3 tag intact just so that none of my uh, metadata changes um, when I go to, uh, to process it. So when I'm done here doing what I wanted to do uh, with it, then I um, click this up here, come up to File, and click Save Trim Selection. And so when I click that, it, uh, it gives you this little reminder to register. And so it is a uh, free-to-use software program, but to support the developer, uh, it's a good idea to try to get a license. Uh, I'm just doing this right now for the screencast to show you, but it's a good idea to do that. Otherwise, you get this ad that uh, makes you wait before it actually does the action. Uh, but now that I'm going to trim it, there it is, uh, new sensation, it's already got it up there. I'm going to put it in the same folder and then I'm just going to have to change the name later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it into that folder and you see that it's saving the trimmed, uh, the trimmed song. And it's up here and it says number one because I have the song in here a couple of times. So what I'm going to do is take the ones that I have in there, I'm just going to throw these in the trash can and uh, rename the song because I don't want it to go in with this extra uh, information on here with the number one. So let me just uh, carefully go on there and put it back just to the song by itself. And so now I want to import this song in and see if it makes any difference. So I'll just drag this right into iTunes here and it's going to add the song. And let me just close my finder down here and I'm going to close down this. Now you'll notice it, it put it as new sensation number one. It shows waiting to upload and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is, uh, is I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to delete, uh, I'm actually going to delete this song out of my library. Now since this was the original song, what I'm going to do is let me just make a uh, another copy of it before I do that, just in case I don't like how things are turning out. So let me delete the old one in here, and then I'm going to drag uh, the one that was already uploaded and looks great, this one right here. I'm going to drag this back into the uh, spot where I had it. So now I know it's safe over here. I can always re-import it if I need to. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this completely. So I'm just going to control uh, click on it and I'm going to delete it. And when you do that you want to also delete it from iCloud because otherwise it's just going to say you have a duplicate. Okay, So I'm going to move that to the trash. Alright, now it's gone. So all I have here is this song here. Now I need to fix this, uh, at least this metadata here on the song. So if you just click on it till you get this uh, uh, blue highlight here, now I can fix this uh, so that it just has the title of the song and now it looks just like it was before. Uh, except that it's waiting. So now you can see we got rid of the LP version that was on there before and now it's 3 minutes and 39 seconds just like we saw in the iTunes store. All right. So now what I'm going to do is now we're going to upload it. So I'm going to come up here to uh, the store and I'm going to update iTunes Match. All right. So now it's going to go and gather the information about my library and let's see what it does with this. Now what I found is that sometimes when you do this, it doesn't change the status uh, from waiting to either uploaded or matched. Uh, sometimes there's a hitch in it and it just kind of sits there for a while. So what I found works is you can shut down iTunes, just completely quit it, and then start it up again. And, uh, and then it usually tends to update the status. So that's another little tip just in case you get stuck with that. 
So uh, we're going to wait for the results to come back, and uh, when they do, then we'll see what happened to our file. Okay, now we're back, and uh, I did have to restart iTunes. So it didn't upload, it just kind of stayed as waiting, even though it returned my match results. Uh, so I quit iTunes, and I relaunched it, and you can see here our song New Sensation with the 3 minutes and 39 seconds like we did before still shows uploaded. It doesn't show matched. So that tells me that with this particular album, uh, the metadata wasn't the issue and the song length wasn't the issue. It probably was a waveform uh, situation uh, or a file size uh, issue because those are the four things that in the research I've done that they say kind of go into that match as far as we know I mean there could be other factors uh, happening as well but at least that gives you an idea of how to go about uh, with a process of looking at your own songs playing with them a little bit and seeing if you can uh, have some results with it uh, like I said I've had a couple of songs where I have done the the song length and uh, and it's worked and I had a few where I had to do kind of a combination of metadata and song length and, and got them to work so uh, you you know, your mileage will vary, but this at least gives you a strategy that you can use to uh, start hopefully uh, fine-tuning those matches. Again, the hope is, is that over time it will just get better and Apple will just update it and you'll see things start to pop up all of a sudden as matched. I I've seen that happen a uh, on, a, on like maybe a one or two songs uh, that matched later, so something changed uh, in their own match process. But, uh, but anyways, that at least gives you a strategy to start looking at maybe some ways to troubleshoot some of your matches. So anyways, that's it for uh, this particular screencast. Uh, hopefully that was helpful to you. And I'll come back at you in the future to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.